This morning, as part of our communion meditation, I would like to focus on the joy that we have because of our walk with Christ. Our joy not only includes the promise of our heavenly inheritance, but also that we have been given the strength to work through the trials here on earth. As we look at 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 9, please remember it was the saving faith given to us by God to believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And through faith in him, we have the assurance of heaven. He is our joy. He is our strength, our rock, and our salvation. If you do not have a Bible, there are some men that are coming down the aisles that would be happy to put one in your hands. And if you do not own a Bible, you may take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for the privilege of coming to you to be at your table to know that it took the death of your son to reconcile men to you. And so we are so grateful for the obedience of Jesus who suffered and died on the cross and was raised on the third day so that we might be restored to you. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read together 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And through you, <clears throat> and though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. So the first thing we see in verse 6 is the phrase, in this you greatly rejoice. It is necessary to know what this is. What is it referring to? So that we can understand why we greatly rejoice. The phrase in this is referring to the previous verses 3 through 5. These passages encourage believers with the truth that God will preserve their faith. Verses 3 through 5 also tell us, by God's mercy, we are born again to a living hope through the death and resurrection of Christ so that we might obtain an inheritance reserved in heaven which is protected by God through faith. However, as we will see in verses 6 through 9, God's power does not shield believers from trials and suffering, but it does protect us from that which could call, cause us to fall away. Faith and hope are ultimately gifts of God, and He strengthens believers so that they persist in faith and hope until the day they see Him face to face. In verses 6 through 9, Peter focuses on the joy and the love that fills the lives of believers. And even though they are suffering, they are joyful. They are joy joyful because suffering is a pathway to godliness, which allows us to persevere until our very last day here on earth. Verse 6 teaches us several important principles about trials. To summarize it quickly, they are for a little while. If necessary, means they have a purpose. The word distressed indicates there will be turmoil 
in the believer's life. Various means that trouble will come in many different forms. However, trials should not diminish the believer's joy. Verse 7 says, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. John MacArthur says this, Trials produce distress for a little while. They come like a fire to burn off the dross. And that's the point. Not only do they reveal your faith, but they purify it. And what emerges is a faith that is more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire. When you get your faith tested, it comes out purer and more precious. So why is it God's plan for Christians to suffer? Now verse 7 provides that answer. Suffering proves the genuineness of our faith. It reveals whether or not our faith is authentic. Peter reminds believers again that the test may be intense. It may be severe. Life in this world is anything but easy. Yet by God's grace, believers are filled with joy. A joy that the world does not know or understand. By grace, <clears throat> by the grace of God, our faith is designed to endure to the end. And what an amazing promise this is. We have a faith in which there is hope. It is protected by God and even made stronger through trials. We have a proven, tested faith that finds its fulfillment in the purpose and the plan of God. Verse 8 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him, and though you do not see him now, but believe in him. That's the bottom line. We have a love uh, for Jesus Christ, and we believe him. This is a profound statement about the nature of true salvation. It is characterized not only by faith in Christ, in believing in Christ, but that we love Christ. And the outcome of this faith is this. Look down at verse 9. The obtaining of the final salvation of your souls. What a wonderful promise to those who love God, who have been redeemed by His grace. If you're here today and you admit that you do not have faith in Christ, that you are not born again, we are grateful that you are here at Grace Bible Church. But I want you to know that it's no coincidence that you're here. And we pray that you will ask the person who brought you, myself or any of the other elders, or there'll be someone up here on your left to pray with you, discuss these things with you. So don't leave today without talking with someone about what it means to be a follower of Christ. With that said, we also ask that you do not participate in communion, since this is a time for believers to remember what Christ has done for them and to rejoice in their relationship with Christ. Believers, please use this time to remember what you have in Christ and to acknowledge any unconfessed sins. Men, please come and serve us.